Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at how I actually create these YouTube videos. We will be looking at all the cameras and the equipment. We'll be looking at the different processes for shooting uh, on the bike and off the bike. So if that's something that interests you, hang around. But first, roll the credits. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to split the video into three sections. Um, firstly, we will have a look at all the camera and the equipment that is used to actually get the footage and record the sound and everything. Um, then we'll have a look at what sort of planning and thought processes go into making a video and how we pre-plan the individual shots that we're going to load up and put into sequence on the video. And then lastly, as it can be a very expensive hobby, I'm going to look at perhaps some shortcuts, some easier ways just to have a little dabble to see whether it's something that you might want to take further and start investing more money in. So we'll have a look at doing it on a budget as well. So let's get started. OK, so um, the first camera we're going to talk about is the GoPro Hero Black 8. Um, as you can see, I use this as my main camera and as with all my cameras, it can be used in multiple roles, both on and off the bike. OK, so here we can see the uh, GoPro actually on the tripod that I use. I also have another tripod, which is um, a little bit lighter and I often put that in a backpack because this one here is a little bit heavy for transporting around. But um, at the end of the day, it's horses for courses. If you want a really stable tripod, then obviously buy something like this. If you want something um, a little lighter, you can get really lightweight ones as well. Um, on top of the camera, you can see uh, a wireless mic. It is a Rode Go mic. It uh, runs off Bluetooth. Um, and you often see me using this, you'll see the little black uh, receiver there. And that is very good as well because if you're relying on the mic actually in the GoPro, then sometimes it can be difficult if there's a lot of wind or there's a lot of background noise, you can um, have difficulties with the audio. So it is an expensive accessory, this Rode mic, but it is a very, very good. Gives absolutely clear um, quality sound results. OK, so uh, the type of footage that we capture with this camera. Um, and normally I would, uh, if I was doing a walk around of the bike, I would use this camera, uh, the GoPro, on a little handheld tripod and I would circle around the bike and get footage that way using that camera. However, obviously for this, for the purposes, I need to show you the camera and I can't use it and show it you at the same time. Um, other clips that we'll get with this are clips like this, what I'm putting up now. Um, so as you can see, this is filmed as a helmet cam um, and the quality is absolutely second to none with this camera. It is a really, really good high quality visuals as you can see. Um, one thing we also have to take into consideration with this uh, camera setup is when the GoPro is attached to the Halmeet, you also have to have a mic wired to the um, actual GoPro itself. Um, you could use the Rode uh, mic setup that we've got now, but as you can see, um, the mics are quite bulky. It's quite difficult to mount that inside a helmet so i tend to use the lavalier gopro mics um, again i use the road variety um, they're very very good they give very very good sound quality and my advice to you is um, if you're going to do this always invest in the best mic that you can afford and uh, make sure that the adapters are correct for the camera that you're using okay um 
the next camera that we're going to talk about is the camera which I've been filming on taking uh, video footage of the GoPro and also the camera that uh, is taking this footage now uh, is the GoPro Hero Session 5. Now the Hero Session 5 is quite an old camera but it does still give um, a relatively good footage. It's not as versatile um, as the other cameras um, but it's still um, it, it is a good camera, very good camera as you can see. So as you can see, here is the Hero Session 5 in situ on the handlebars. It's a simple GoPro mount um, and it, it's in a fixed angle view all the time looking back to me. And to activate it, all I do is just press a button on the top and bang, away we go. And that's how I get um, the footage of me looking down at the camera. Just to the side, this is a, a new uh, piece of tech that I bought and I haven't tested yet. This is the remote control activator for this camera over here, the Instit360, um, which we'll talk about uh, a little later. So between the two cameras, um, the GoPro Hero 8 Black and the Hero Session 5, um, you can pretty much get um, good results with those two cameras i mean you can mount your hero session anywhere so you know with a clamp setup like we have here which again is um, a ram mount it's a big claw mount with a, a ball socket extension so that you can adjust the angle um, you could use um that's that uh, Hero 5 session on that mount, absolutely no problems whatsoever and get some absolutely fantastic shots. Having said that, if you can only afford um, a GoPro camera, just the one, get the Hero 8 Black. Um, you know, if you're on a tight budget, go for the 7, but I would recommend the Black as it is a far superior camera. And just with a Hero Go uh, 8 Black, you can actually get some really, really nice footage and get some uh, professional looking videos made once you get used to the thought process and how to film and set up your video. Okay, so let's talk about this uh, camera here. This is the Insta360 ONE X2. Now this is an expensive piece of kit, but it is a very, very versatile camera. Um, the one downside with it is um, the way that I edit on this camera. I can shoot at 4K, but I can only shoot at 30 frames a second. Um, with motor vlogging, especially when you're on a fast moving vehicle, you really need to be shooting at 60 frames a second to get a nice, clear, uh, blur free picture. So um, that's why when you see me mix and matching shots from the Hero Go 8 and the Insta360, um, the footage from the Insta360 isn't quite as crisp and as clear and as smooth and that is purely down to shooting in the, the two different resolutions. It would be absolutely amazing if Insta upped the game and gave us 60 frames per second in 4K. But even so, the footage you get with this camera is absolutely amazing. As it says, it's a 360 so you have a lens on the front and you have a lens on the back. And, you know, it, it shoots in all directions and when you edit it, you can look in any direction and it means you can get amazing shots like this. You know, if you look at this shot now that I, I'm showing, um, it's almost like the camera's floating in front of the motorcycle. Um, I can change angles, I can pan around, I can zoom. It's almost like having your own film crew following you around. Um, very very good but something like this um, I would only recommend if you're really going to take this up as a serious hobby um, you're far better off with the, the GoPro Hero 8 as it, it, it's more versatile uh, and not more versatile but perhaps easier to use than using the Insta360 um, the editing process is quite laboured uh, and quite intensive with this you have to edit it within the app um, create a video and then you have to transfer that into the video on the GoPro um, so it, it's a bit long-winded and 
you know I would only recommend getting one of these for moto vlogging anyway if you're going to take it up as a serious hobby. Okay let's go on to the last camera that I use and this is a DJI Mavic Mini drone. Um, you can get some absolutely fantastic footage with this um, but as for using it for moto vlogging it's only if you're really really serious about taking the the hobby up because it is an expensive piece of kit. I must admit that I haven't been using this to its full capabilities. The one thing I will say about having one of these, you need to practice with it. You need to understand how the drone performs and how to control it, especially in the varying weather conditions and lighting conditions that you get. Um, actually editing the footage is very easy. Uh, and I'm still learning as I go along using this equipment, but I can guarantee you that this drone is going to be used more and more in my upcoming videos and you're going to be seeing it used a lot more and incorporated in the footage. Um, let's go on to some accessories and believe me this is just scratching the surface of the accessories that I've got, but uh, the must-haves um, if you're going to be filming from your helmet using a GoPro, you need this set up. Um, and as you can see, it's like a Meccano, it's like a jigsaw set. There's all individual little pieces. And depending on what type of helmet you've got and where you're actually mounting it, whether it's going to be on the side, the top, the chin, all depends on what kind of um, links you will need. Um, you can get all this stuff off eBay and off Amazon. It's uh, very, very easy to purchase. Um, you can actually buy these as a set but you can't guarantee that you will get the right angle and um, it will be suitable for your helmet. You might buy the set and then just have to buy one or two links um, just to get the right angle on your helmet. These types of things here you can see, um, a claw uh, clamp, I really, really like them. Um, the one thing I will say about the little ones, be very careful. If you don't get a very high quality one, they will snap and you will lose your camera. Um, I tend to go for the really big one that I've got on my bike. It's very rare. I would only put that on the handlebars or somewhere out of the wind. Um, if I was mounting externally, you know, down low on the bike on crash bars or something like that, I use the big mount. Um, the big mounts aren't cheap. They're about £100. You must probably get them cheaper if you shop around. However, when you consider the value of the camera that you're mounting on it, it's while we're spending that little bit of extra money. Again, GoPro batteries and a charger that works off USB-C. So I can just pop that into my side box and charge it on the go so I can keep recycling batteries so I never run out of batteries. The same kind of thing here for the Insta360, two spare batteries plus a battery charger. Again, um, USB so that I can charge it on the go. Um, sometimes when walking around a bike and you're looking underneath the bike, you need a little bit of extra light. So again, just um, a battery operated uh, cold shoe light that you can place on top of the GoPro or place it onto another little handheld tripod like so. And um, again, very, very handy. Um, you can set this on a table and have the camera looking at you. Saves carrying around the big tripod. Um, extension bars, again, um, these can fit on, they fit in as so, and then you can just get a little bit of extension and a better angle on your shots. A big selfie stick, again, self-explanatory, I think we all know how those works, that extends out, uh, I don't know, about three or four foot, that one's quite a big one. So, um, memory cards are another one and you really do need to invest in one of these waterproof shockproof um, containers packages whatever you want to call it um, there's nothing worse than having a week's load of footage recorded on various memory cards and then they get wet and then they're ruined so definitely buy a shockproof case like that okay so a last piece of accessory equipment uh, this is the Movie X-Pack backpack and as you can see it's uh, a very slimline uh, backpack, it's really good quality, um, it's really well padded, um, 
and basically this is designed specifically for mounting cameras as you can see there's an extension pole that, that comes out and inside as you can see there is a hard bracket which means that this can be adjusted to any angle you want you can have it vertically up you can have it horizontally out you can have it however you want it um, and get some amazing shots with it especially with the insta360 this works really really well and then obviously there's little compartments for putting uh, bits and bobs uh, batteries there's a waterproof cover for it um, again I can't remember how much I paid for it, around about £100 I think. Okay, so we've just scratched the surface there of the kit that I have. You also have to remember that you need cases to put all this equipment in when you're transporting it on your bike. The last thing you want is all those bits and bobs rattling around in a backpack loose or in the back of a, a top box or a side case. So again, that is another added expense. You can buy specifically designed cases for all this. Um, you can buy cheaper ones and just pop a little bit of foam in there and, and convert it and make it how you want it. Okay, so um, the next section of the video is the, the pre-planning um, aspect of the video. Now, I must admit, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty terrible at this. I tend to do things just off the cuff. Um, granted, I will get an idea perhaps two or three days a week before I shoot the video and I do sort of plan it in my head I, I break it down into the three sections what I want to do I always have the introduction where I'm saying hello welcome to the channel and I give you a brief of what's coming up on uh, the video to follow um, and obviously I then show the credits just to advertise the channel and then I'll break it down into um, me setting off sometimes, you know, a little moulage of me getting on the bike, putting the helmet on, driving off into the sunset, that type of thing. That is one of the, the shots that you can use. Um, and then you look at sort of mid-section where you're actually doing shots on the bike. Now, what I tend to do with this is for visual shots, I'm always looking and surveying the area and picturing what it will look like in my mind. There's nothing worse than driving down a country lane with tall hedges on both sides and that's all you can see because it's boring for the viewer. So I always try and um, switch the camera on and off and only switch it on when I see something that I think will be visually just right for the shot that I'm doing. Um, the other thing that you have to think about is actually where you're mounting the cameras and what kind of angle and what kind of shot they will give you. So you will only be able to do this by trial and error. Um, I have my own places like I've got the 360 camera on the front there which I really like. It's one of my favourite shots. Looking back up at me on the bike it's like the the, the camera's floating in front of the bike and then through editing I can just spin that shot round I can look forward I can look sideways so if all of a sudden I think oh look at that house over there I can actually pan that camera around post editing to show you what I'm looking at and that is why that camera is so versatile and why I love it um, the downside with this camera at the moment is um, the only way you can fit an external mic on is using one of these Bluetooth Rode mics. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I have got all the adapters for it and it's something I'm going to try and have a go with. But the only thing that is a difficulty is that you would have to mount that either inside your helmet and it's quite bulky to do that or you could put it on the side and then have your uh, lavalier mic plugged into it with a wire like so. But I'm not sure how to mount this on the outside of the helmet at the moment. That's something I'm looking into. So um, those are the planning sort of things that you have to think about. Also, when you are shooting with multiple cameras, it does make things quite difficult because you have to think about syncing them all up when you're actually editing. So for example, um, if I'm talking about my hero uh, session five and I'm saying, oh, I'm going to mount it down here and I'm pointing down and I want to switch in between the views from this camera to that camera, 
I've only got one sound recording and that is on the GoPro. So I have to sync it up time wise so that it matches. So as I'm talking and pointing down, the sound and the video from the Hero Session syncs and matches, if that makes sense. It's very difficult for me to do this video. One, because I'm not a professional and I have no qualifications in this. And two, it gets started to get very, very technical. And if you've never done this before, you're not going to have a clue what I'm on about and it's going to be very, very boring. So I'm not really going to go into it more than that. Um, I will just give you the pre-warning. When you're using multiple cameras, it becomes an absolute nightmare in editing. Um, one of the best things you can do is just give a hand signal or uh, perhaps lift your visor up and down so that you know from that point when you find that on all your different camera footage you know that's where it started and you've synced it straight away because you've got that visual aid of um, making a hand gesture or lifting the helmet. Okay, um, another aspect of pre-planning is um, when you start getting to the stage where you've got multiple videos uploaded, it becomes very, very difficult to actually think of different things to do. You know, there are a lot of channels out there all doing the same thing. Um, some specialise just in reviews, some specialise just in touring. I tend to do a little bit of everything. Um, I don't have a, a, a huge budget um, to do all this kind of thing and I don't have a lot of time to be honest with my job so I just try and as things come up I just shoot it uh, I would like to say that I have a master plan and I plan things out months in advance I don't I just plan things off the cuff one video to the next that's why I'm always asking you guys out there to give me ideas just to help me out a little bit and uh, I have been asked on multiple occasions to do this video so um, what else can I say Okay, um, another aspect of when you're actually filming the videos, it's having the gift of the gab, it's knowing what to say. And there's no way I can teach you or even give you tips on this. You can either do it or you can't. There are days where I'll be riding along and there is absolutely stunning scenery and I just can't think of anything to say. Uh, I don't know, you get like a mental block um, there are other times where you can just rattle on and rattle on and rattle on and it, it, it all comes naturally and really smooth. Um, I don't know what's behind that, it, it's just the way it is. Some days you've got a lot to say, some days you haven't. I suppose it's just what mood you're in, what state of mind you're in. Another thing that I will say about actually uh, camera presence, um, try not to talk to the camera, try and imagine that you know, there's a group of people out there, two or three of your mates, and you're just talking to them. And especially when you're doing reviews and you're trying to explain things, there's nothing worse than getting all tongue-tied. And it happens. I mean, when I first started uh, recording this video today, I did so many takes in the first 10 minutes, it was unbelievable. Um, sometimes it just doesn't flow. You know, you'll get halfway through a sentence and you forget what you want to say. Um, or you'll say something and it just comes out wrong or you say things in wrong orders and you miss things out. All I will say is when you first start, don't get disheartened by that because it never goes away. And I'm sure that everybody who shoots these type of videos will tell you the same. You always make bloopers, you always make mistakes, you always get tongue-tied, you always fumble with things, you drop the camera, you do this, you do that. Don't let it put you off. Don't think, oh, I'm rubbish at this. It doesn't come naturally. However, the more you do it, the more you'll find you'll relax and the more you will get into it and you'll get your flow and even your style of presentation. Um, I try not to copy anybody else's style of presentation. Um, I've been in the military for quite a while and um, I've also done lots of lessons in the medical and the private sector after I left the army so I'm quite used to standing up in front of a bunch of people and doing this kind of thing so it is a little bit easier for me to relax um, 
but like I say, you will soon, soon get into it. You know, don't expect to buy a camera and be able to stand in front of it and just waffle away. Some people will, some people have the confidence and will be very good at it. Others, you'll have to work at it, but it will come, it will come. And just be yourself. You know, don't look on other channels and, and try and copy other presentators because that's when you'll run into difficulty because you can't keep that up. Um, just be yourself and it'll come naturally and it will look so much better actually on camera. Okay, so um, now let's talk about cost. Um, it is a very, very expensive hobby to do uh, to get good results. Um, I must be well over £2,000 in with kit, most probably more than that. I dread to think, I've, I've never added it up. But, you know, I get the use out of it. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It gets me out of the house. Um, it inspires me to do things uh, that normally I wouldn't be doing. So, um, it's horses for courses. Uh, I would not recommend anybody go out and jump in at, at that level and, and spend that sort of cash. If you've got the money, then fair enough, you know, horses for courses. But for the majority of us, we need to start off small, dip our toes in and see if we enjoy it. And so with that, I would say, um, for me, if you want good results or acceptable results, the minimum you want to be looking at is a Hero GoPro 7 Black. Um, ideally, I would go for a second hand eight uh, and try and get that camera. Um, always try and buy a good mic, the best mic you can afford. I would recommend the Rode lavalier mics. They're easy to fit in the helmet and you get good sound quality from them. Um, and then a good quality mount to fit on the side of your helmet or the front of the helmet. Again, um, don't buy bargain basement parts because they snap and you'll lose your camera um, again a cheap tripod you must probably pick one up second hand 15 20 quid off ebay um, again you don't have to buy new go out buy second hand kit to start with uh, you'll save yourself a fortune and you'll be able to see whether you enjoy um, making these type of videos um, another thing to consider as well is if you want to edit in very high quality video, you're going to have to have, um, I wouldn't say a very expensive computer, but it's going to be a mid-range computer. I'm not very good on the technical side of things. Best advice is research on YouTube or go into Curry's or somewhere like that and ask them what are the minimum requirements as in video card and processors and memory for uh, video editing uh, HD footage and they'll put you on the right track. Um, the other thing that you have to consider, you will need software to actually um, edit all your footage. There are different ones, there's Corral, there's, there's, there's loads of different ones. Um, I would advise you to go for one of the free ones first. You can get free downloads. Uh, I think I used one called Shotcut Pro. Uh, if I remember right. Um, again, go on YouTube and just research what are the best free video editors. Um, there's all different ones. I'm not going into the technicalities of them. Uh, and, you know, cut your teeth on one of those so you can learn how to do all the different editing. I have been asked to show you how I edit videos, but to be honest, it is very technical. Um, and I'm not a professional, and there are lots of videos on YouTube from guys who do it for a profession, who, um, that's their whole channel. They just teach people how to vid uh, edit videos. So you would be far better looking on one of their channels than me trying to bluff my way through it and leading you down the wrong path. So uh, I will leave that one out there for you lot to go and uh, sort out yourselves. Um, other than that, you know, it is an expensive hobby. You can do it a lot cheaper. You can buy a lot cheaper uh, cameras than GoPros, but to be honest, the video quality isn't that good. Um, it's all down to what you want and what your budget is at the end of the day. For me, if I'm gonna do it, I want to get at least a half decent result. And uh, for me, GoPro is the way to go with that. Um, well, 
I guess that's just about everything covered. So um, I hope that this hasn't been too boring for you. Um, it has been a difficult one for me to actually cover because as I say, I have no qualifications for this. I'm not technical minded. So it, it's been a difficult one for me to shoot and explain to you all. And I hope it's come across okay. Um, if there's anything that I haven't covered, you've got any questions, just leave me some comments. And as always, I will always get back to you and answer your comments. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, all that's left to say now is uh, thank you everybody for keeping the faith of the channel. Uh, we're getting loads and loads of subscribes, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I've got some great videos coming up, so, you know, subscribe, keep tuned in, press the like button if you've liked this video. And all that's left to say is Bike Rider Reviews out. Ride safe, everybody.